looking okay. But, um, let's check the weather. I mean, it's pretty much working the way it should be. It's about 92 out now, and, um, it's got to cool down to 75. So, probably a little bit weak. But, at least he's a realistic customer. He understands, I mean, system's not going to get you, especially the system that's old, not going to get you much more than a 20 degree um, <clears throat> difference in temperature between the outdoor air and the indoor, um, as far as the design temperature slip. So, um, yeah, I've got to give him his credit. He's pretty realistic about it. He wasn't expecting 70. He's got it set to 70, but uh, he wasn't, he wasn't expecting that, so kudos to him on that. But as far as what I'm seeing here, I mean, line is barely condensing, doesn't feel very cool. I'm probably going to think it's more than likely just low on refrigerant. And those periods where he wasn't feeling the fan running was probably just uh, frozen up coil, I guess. Probably just if I had to guess, if I were guessing, man, that's what I would, that's what I would assume. I don't like that. It's temperature just all over the place. Yeah, 73. It's not really that good. That's not good at all. But an outdoor temperature of 92. Um. 75 degree incoming air, so that means your pull would be about 40 degrees. Let's see what these pressures have to say. I think it was probably low on charge though, man. Twenty-four degrees of superheat. We got twenty-four degrees of superheat. Um, two degrees, about three degrees of subcooling. Ah, that's a dirty, dirty coil. It's one of those micro channel coils. See if you can take a look how dirty that thing is. You can barely tell, but it's pretty dirty. And you can actually see by the um, liquid line temperature there. It's uh, 114, so it's not rejecting enough heat. Got slightly high head pressure, but it's mostly going to show up on a higher liquid line. And reduce your subcooling. That's why you've got reduced subcooling. But yeah, you can definitely see. Let me see if I can um, get a really tight close up of those coils. Yeah, I don't know if you could see all the dirt between those spins. Definitely need to change those, uh, clean those coils. It's probably got a low charge to boot. You just can't really tell just due to the um, head pressure. But as you can see, it's raised our liquid line temperature, which has essentially, you know, um, lowered our subcooling. I'm gonna go and put my um, psychometers in the ducts. See what we get. That there. Well, it looks okay. We got a 16 degree split. 
which is actually pretty decent. Um, let me go ahead and clean these coils and see if that does any better. I'll go ahead and clean it. Clean it from the inside out. This will kind of help um, force it out. Yeah, it's much better. be good. Yeah, let's try to let this suffer run for a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a whole lot better. So this is just what we were starting with. I mean, obviously, that's going to be, the store is going to be low just due to the, the fact that this condenser is um, removing a whole lot more heat than normal. Air pressures are super low. Oh yeah, look at that. But let that thing equalize, stabilize, and hopefully get a little bit better readouts here. Look, before I had, I think, about 16 degree split. I think what was going on with that, it's the TXB, you can tell by the stable uh, suction line. Uh, suction pressure and I went up there and checked but um basically I imagine that false head, head pressure based off the heat not being rejected gave it a, a higher pressure differential across the uh, metering device which gave us a better split so um, I found that pretty interesting but um yeah now that that coils up clean it's very obvious that it's a uh, low on charge here I mean, we're probably looking at about two pounds, give or take. So that's why they always say, you know, check your or clean, you know, check both coils, clean the coils before you get started on uh, any adding any refrigerants. Very crucial. That made a heck of a difference. Probably a lot more apparent with um, TXVs, but uh, I mean, it made a real, real heavy difference. Pretty cool. I like stuff like that because, I mean, you know, the readings were so false. I would have thought the temp split would have actually gone up after cleaning the coils. You know? So. Which, if it were properly charged, um, I'm sure it would have gone up actually, but you know, you got multiple issues there. And when you look at the trending graph, you can see your subcooling start to rise, your superheat it starts to drop there. I mean, it was a uh, rock solid at 36 degrees, now it's 
trending down towards 27. Pretty cool. 26. You can see all the pressure is trying to. Um, and the coils are probably still a little bit wet. And they look pretty plenty dry to me, but you can see our liquid line is still kind of uh, low. Temp split's looking a lot better, 17 degrees split. Um, I've got about a pound and a half in there so far. You can see my um, head pressure's trying to climb a little bit. Suction line's looking a whole lot better, 58 degrees. Now as this thing starts to stabilize, you're gonna start to see the suction line temperature's gonna go up to about 60 or so. I'm not sure, let me put that on TXV. That looks good. I mean, we got some super heat now. And I think it's a 12 degree sub cooling this thing calls for, so I think it's gonna stabilize, get us right where we wanna be. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's got a leak, it's an older system, so a slight overcharge. Probably do them a favor, if anything. Doing them a, you know, benefit. So, liquid line is still a little bit cool. I think my outdoor temperature might be high anyway. Um, check this out. Feels like it's dropped about five degrees. That's still 92. So. Well, either way, like I said, it's um that sub cooling is a little bit high, but it's going to go down here shortly. Um, as our coils dry the rest of the way, and as um the you know the, the uh, system's temp starts to equalize between the metering device, so that was a pretty um pretty simple one. Pretty quick one, uh, let me know how you think, what you think about it, and, oh yeah, let's see what Measure Click has to say, actually. Aha, uh -huh. system may be overcharged, no dome. Yep, look at the line below outdoor temperature, so that's just due to the, uh, coil still being a little bit saturated. And it's probably not even overcharged, I'm just trying to charge it while still, the coils are still a little bit wet. I mean, I waited about 20 minutes, but I don't have all day to be sitting here, so... Got a 19 degree split. I'm satisfied with that. All right, guys. So, appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.